All right, so it is another beautiful Sunday night in which we get to talk arena indoor football and everything that has been going on the past week. Um, again, Jeff Fisher is now the AFL commissioner. Things are being reworked with the AFL right now. I know Rapid City is, you know, potentially going to be something that could that has to be monitored over the next couple of weeks because they have not played a game in quite some time. They canceled the game this week. They canceled the game for next week. Uh, like the Oregon Black Bears weren't supposed to be here, but now they are back in. So yeah, there's there's that. Um, honestly, the AFL games this week weren't super competitive you know there's a couple of, of interesting plays i'll say that much um including one play today you know a couple of trick passes that didn't work you know the firebirds beat the brakes off of southwest kansas oregon and washington in a slug fest um nashville having a good crowd out in clarksville Billings still looking like the class of the AFL along with the Firebirds of Albany and everything like that. So, yeah, um, there's that. Um, so, yeah, while things continue to get reworked for the AFL, you know, everything's going to be okay. I think everything is going to be okay. It's not going to be perfect. Obviously, everything's going to at least be okay. We're going to be okay. All right. We're going to be okay. Um, there's a couple of things from like, you know, um, TAL that I want to talk about briefly. Eau Claire, I think that's how you say it. It's up in Wisconsin. That's going to be their sixth team for 2025. They got Hot Springs, Arkansas, and now Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And also, why is Elite Indoor Football back? Why are the Southern Screams still here? Now they're calling themselves the Scream instead of the Steam. You know, why are they still here? Um, yeah, there's apparently going to be an EIF championship next weekend. I don't know how. I don't know why. But the Carolina Predators are in that since, you know, the Carolina Cobras said, nah, we're not going to play y'all this week. We're, you know, going to be like, yeah, we're, we're trying to prevent injuries and stuff like that. So that that was Carolina's big deal about it. They made a big old fuss about it. You know, well, the Cobras did. The Cobras made a big old fuss about it. At least the Cobras fans, you know, the Cobras probably were like, I mean, we're trying to keep our players safe and everything like that. Again, this probably should have been scheduled way sooner, in my personal opinion. But, you know, Carolina has to have that that quota of home games. But ultimately, um, yeah, that, that game got canceled and everything like that. So there's that. Um, if you're wondering about all the AL2 games, I cannot track down the scores of all the games. Um, why are the Atlanta Fury is still here? I don't know why. It doesn't matter. Um, honestly, only pay attention to that 25-20 game, Wheeling and Jersey in a dogfight yet again. Uh, so, But Wheeling has beaten Jersey twice. So there's that. You know, again, dogfight. But ultimately, the Wheeling Miners are still unbeaten, 6-0, and and they got, what, two games left after this? And then the AAL2 Championship, which will be in West Banco Arena. Um, the other stuff, the NAL, you know, you know, I mean, Idaho just, I don't know what in the world happened in that game. I don't know what in the world happened in that game against Colorado. That game was rough. Um, Sioux City and Omaha in another dog fight, probably one of the best games of the weekend. You know, Omaha was down like 32 to 20 at some point. They were down. They were down quite a bit in this game. You know, Omaha was down quite a bit in this game, but yet some late theatrics late got Omaha the victory over Sioux City. And yet again, the Omaha beef are still unbeaten. So um, the only AIF game that took place this week was the Amarillo Venom beating the brakes off the Texas Hot Shots, 77-6. Quad City, late field goal, got them past Iowa. Massachusetts lost by one. Green Bay 
with Maynard Burgess in that defense. Beat the brakes off the Frisco Fighters, 67 38. Sioux Falls was up 42 21 over Jacksonville at one point, and you knew it was over. The fight in Sam Castronovas beat Tulsa by 11. Vegas is no longer unbeaten. Duke City still winless. And Bay Area beats Arizona. So, yeah, that's basically it. Um, I know I kind of just kind of skimmed over the scores and everything like that, but, you know, this this week was a lot better than the last couple weeks. You know, I know stuff has been coming out from, you know, other, you know, major YouTubers and stuff like that about, you know, things that have been happening, but we are in it to be in it. We are in position to be in position at this point. Um, the AFL schedule, it'll be out at some point. Um, so that may impact some videos. That may impact some future weeks. You know, the, at least the next six or seven weeks in this thing. So I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, again, you know, I know it says first goes in first place, but don't and it's because the IFL um, standings are a little weird with the whole points for, points against thing being one of the tiebreakers. But in, realist, in realistic fashion, you know, because also Frisco hasn't played a whole lot of conference games, that's also that. You know, so really just treat it as Green Bay being in first place in the East. Um in Massachusetts, you know, in order to Arizona in a dog fight, which I did not catch the end of, I fell asleep, you know, at some point during the afternoon, took a little afternoon nap at some point, you know, on Saturday afternoon. And, you know, next week's going to be interesting. You know, it's going to be pretty interesting. We got a, I think we got a Friday night game. Um, I don't know about the Thursday night game yet. I don't know what's happening again i don't know what's happening with the afl schedule it's going to be out when it's out uh al2 can't really say too much about the al2 that hasn't been said already it's wheeling's league to win we all know that peach state and company and, and teams like the dallas falcon and the waco tornadoes are not going to be obviously in the AL2 championship unless things go the way they are supposed to go um Again, that that the whole Carolina Predators thing kind of surprised me because again, I had not. I thought the EIF was completely dead, but turns out there's turns out the Southern Steam, you know, are still do are still alive somehow. Same thing with the Atlanta Furies; they're still alive somehow. Why are they still alive? I have no idea. It's whatever at this point for teams like those. I I I, 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 I don't know. Um, I noticed some stuff coming out, you know, this past week talking, you know, about Cedar Rapids and everything like that. You know, you know, I, I genuinely do not have, I have the understanding here with Cedar Rapids. You know, uh, at first I thought, you know, maybe, you know, you know, maybe things were a little bit wrong, but it turns out things may be more right. You know, that Shady, you know, kind of had been initially, you know, intended. It turns out things were a little bit more right on that front. At least that's what Boy J. Coble said, you know. Um, so I don't know about that front. It's it's a messy situation with Cedar Rapids anyway. Just a messy situation all around. Can't really do anything about that. Uh, Harrisburg also is going to be hosting a team called Del Marva, which is another semi-pro team that, you know, exists to exist. Uh, so, yeah, that's also happening. Other than that, I've got nothing. Um, again, sorry, I can't find all the AL2 scores. Those are the only three I could find. You know, of course, things got impacted because the AL2 kicked out some teams. So, you know, a lot of leagues kicking out teams and everything like that. Um, are things stronger? Not necessarily. Um, you know, with the whole AFL thing, are things stronger now with the 10 or 11 teams that they have? Not necessarily because, you know, um, 
And I know people have been arguing and, you know, complaining and arguing and stuff like that about this whole thing with the um, with wages and everything. Like, you got to pay the players a thousand dollars. This unfortunately, this we all know this, that this sport is not the most viable. It's not the most viable. It's not the most stable. It's not the most fortifiable. So, you know, 250 plus under the table stuff is probably the best you're going to get. Maybe, and I use the guesstimate of like 300, 400, 500 dollars. Also, I use that guesstimate of 250 to 500 dollars. I use that guesstimate to, you know, a week. I use that guesstimate instead of, you know, just simply saying 250 dollars. So we all know there's under the table stuff like sponsorships and everything like that. I know people have been, have been, you know, kind of, you know, on the whole, well, we need to pay the players more type thing. You know, we're not going to get back to that peak of the early 2000s with the NBC. We're not going to get back to that peak at this moment. It's going to take some time on that. So other than that, I don't really have anything else to say. Um, there has been some modifications to certain things, as you can see. I have a new channel banner. So there's a couple of things that we are going to be discussing over the next few days um, as the school year winds down. So that means there will be some videos that will be coming out earlier in the afternoon next week and, you know, this, even this week. Um, actually, something got moved up. So, you know. Obviously, we'll talk, you know, this weekend indoor football next weekend around the same time and everything like that, 8.30-ish. I'll have the video up a little after 8.30, maybe close to 9. And, yeah, another great week of games, kind of, in a way. But, um, yeah, that's going to do it for me. I'm going to get out and out your hair.